This morning, you're my desire. Lord. We're not here just for a service or just to sing songs, God. We're here to seek your face, the living God, the one true living God. Come on, you're the desire of our hearts, oh Lord. Let's sing it together. All my days on earth I will away. Tell all you have 
blessed us more than we dreamt of. You have blessed us even more than we have imagined. That's why this afternoon we want to thank you Lord from the depth of our heart. Someone once said something. He said Some, somebody might have succeeded in tampering with your yesterday in a very negative way. He said but that same fellow that tempered with your yesterday, have no access to your today. Your day is very fresh. Your day is very new. And the Bible says it is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Even if someone tampered with something around you an hour before you tune in, but you still have this moment, you still have this second, you still have this minute that is not with that person, but it is in the hands of God. That's why we are going ahead to appreciate God that he has blessed us even more than we dreamt of. He has blessed us more than we can imagine. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. He has indeed blessed us beyond our wildest imagination. Father, we appreciate you this moment. We give you all the glory because you still give us an opportunity to, 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 to thank you because of the blessing of this new day. It is the day that you have made. Therefore, we want to fulfill scripture by rejoicing in this day that you have made, by giving you glory and praise in this new day that you have made. Thanking you, O oh God, that we are part of those that are alive in this new day. Thanking you, Lord, that we are part of those that will testify of your blessings 
in this new day. Thank you, mighty God, for being so kind, for being so faithful and true to us. We appreciate you. In Jesus' great name, we have given him thanks. Eternal rock of ages, it is with a heart that is full of joy and gratitude that we thank you. We celebrate you because you have made this day for us to rejoice and be glad in. You have made this day to compensate us in case we didn't have occasion to rejoice the way we might have loved to yesterday. Father, you have blessed us with a gift of a new day as a compensation so that we can rejoice and be glad in it. Father, indeed, we have been rejoicing. Our heart is being gladdened by you because of this precious gift that you have given us. We thank you, O oh God, for this midday prayer. We appreciate you, O oh God, because we know you are set to minister to our hearts again today. We know by the end of today's meeting, we will be rejoicing in your presence. We'll be rejoicing in hope. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have uh, thanked him. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everyone. It is a wonderful time again to be in God's presence with great men and women like you that have always connected to Travel of Hana Interdenominational Midday Platform. I welcome you specially to this special edition today in the name of Jesus Christ. We are servants of God that love to advertise whatever God is doing. It gives us joy. It brings fulfillment to our hearts when we advertise the work of God. Women are known in advertising, heralding the gospel. Remember the woman in the book of John chapter 4, the woman in Samaria. The Bible says when she heard all that she conversed with Christ, she ran to the city to advertise and she gathered the men of the city. She directed them to come and see someone that told her everything about herself. I don't know what God might have ministered to you from on this platform. Be like that woman of Samaria. Share this broadcast with someone. Tell him or her to come and see this God that has been turning situations around for you on this platform. Invite them very quickly because the servant of God is said to be a blessing to us today. I can see angels testimony. I think very soon I'll start giving special gifts to those that connect online very fast to the very first three or let me say first two that connect that is from uh from this week we'll begin from this week monday i will have a weekly uh i will do it maybe once in a month so that i won't say every week and i end up not fulfilling my promise praise the lord once in a month a special gift will be given to the very first two that came online very fast Praise the Lord. So if I were you, I'll start preparing. I will not mention what gift it is, but we will give you something special that will enhance you spiritually. So prepare. Once in a month. We are in a new month, so we will begin this month. May that person be you in Jesus' name. Amen. We are glad to have God's servant today. That has always been a blessing to us on this platform. Mommy Labi is not new to us, but whenever she is here, she delivers the word of God to us in an unusual dimension. She is a vessel of God that I honor greatly, and I thank God for the many sacrifices she keeps making to see to it that uh, she avail herself to be a blessing to humanity on this platform. Today we are glad and blessed to have her minister to us in our midday prayer. With joy in our hearts, I would like us to put our hands together for the Lord as we welcome Dickness Blessing Labi Momim Kubwa. Let's put our hands together as we receive her. You're welcome, ma. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We know you are here, and we know that you have come to wipe those secret tears away. Hallelujah. Because with you, Jesus, all things are possible. How do we know you are here? A songwriter says, how do we know you are strong? 
And how do we know you have come to wipe those secret tears away? The answer is this afternoon, this morning, someone that has just connected will not return back the same way. The benefit and the reward of appearing before God and before the presence of the Lord shall be your experience in the name of Jesus Christ. We must understand one thing that God has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. One of the rewards of uh, soul winning, as we were told by our mother on Monday, was that God gives us answers, speedy answers to our prayers. And we are here again this afternoon to seek him. And I know that as you make up your mind to share this broadcast, because part of evangelism, part of reaching out to souls, is also to share. Just press the share button, tap on it, and ensure that your friends, your loved ones, your relations, whoever that you know that is part of your contact, your Facebook friends, why not ensure they are beneficiaries of what God is doing on this platform of the travel of Hannah. I would like to appreciate God's servant for this privilege again. Thank you so much, Ma. And for all of you that connected, God bless you. We are moving from glory to glory. Whatever it is, that is a challenge. This afternoon, I assure you that the strong God is already at work. You are returning back with your own testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I would like us to understand that there is something so unique about the woman. In fact, each time I meditate about who the woman is, it's so amazing that the woman is created a multifaceted, she's a multidimensional creature. She functions in different class and in different offices. In the book of John chapter 4, an interesting story Concerning the Samaritan woman, the Bible says Jesus met her at the well. Something happened. The Bible speaking in that same John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Verse um, 7. The Bible says, There come a woman of Samaria to draw water. Do you know that each time we come here, we are coming to draw water? Not the physical water we draw. Because Jesus likened the water that the woman was lacking as the water, everlasting life. The water that springs up from our inside that gives everlasting life. And look at it. When the Samaritan water came, Jesus said to her, give me to drink. This woman thought Jesus was asking her to give him of the water she came to draw. But the truth is, that was not where Jesus was aiming at. Jesus was trying to bring the woman to the consciousness of who she is and what she carries. You must understand that as a woman, there is content in you. There is something in you. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your qualification. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you're going through. There is content in you. There is something in you that men are waiting to draw out from. There is something in you. So Jesus took her through this conversation and look at it. They went down in verse 14. He told her that the water he is referring to is everlasting water that whoever takes of it shall not thirst again because the water shall spring from inside that individual an everlasting well that will give everlasting life. And look at it. When this woman had encounter with this man that gives the water of life, just like every one of us have had an encounter with the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have connected and our content is filled. Our content is so full that it is already overflowing in some of us. The Bible says when this woman discovered that she, she was a container that carries content that other men need to partake of, the Bible says she ran back into the city 
and began to call on the men of the city. Remember, it was men that kept making her to change husbands up to five times. She went back to the same men to invite them to come and see a man she made that have told her everything about herself. She didn't open Genesis. She didn't open Revelation. She just spoke from her inside. She spoke from the content she carried. Come see a man who told me everything about myself. About myself. The emphasis was not Genesis. The emphasis was not uh, 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 Exodus. The emphasis was not Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The emphasis was not Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. The emphasis was come here a man who told me, me, everything about myself. So woman, I would like you to understand that evangelism begins with your person. 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 So it doesn't matter how empty you feel you are. You carry content. Other empty containers are waiting for you so that you feel them. Your life alone is an instrument, a tool of evangelism. Look at what this woman did when she went back to the city. I believe she went back to the same men that knew her. But this time around, she was telling them she met with another man. Not this kind of men I've been meeting with that have told me everything about myself. So they could not resist. I believe in the midst of the men that she was talking to, some would be saying, please forget this woman. I know her. I know her story. What is new about her? She said, no, there is something about me that all of you don't know, but this man is aware of, and he told me everything about myself. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 1 to 7. 2 Kings chapter 1 from, uh, from chapter 4 from verse 1 to 7. The Bible talks about the woman whose husband was one of the sons of the prophet. And he died and left so much dead. I would like us to read it. 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1. The Bible says, Now there cried a certain woman. Of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. This woman was married to a man that feared God, and yet the man was indebted. He died and left death unpaid. But she had somebody that was a spiritual head to her husband in the person of prophet Elisha and the Bible says she ran to him for help. In verse 2 the Bible says and Elisha said unto her what shall I do for thee? Tell me what has thou in thy house? Every miracle begins with what you have in your inside. The prophet asked her what do you have in your house? The house here is your spiritual being. It can be likened to your spiritual being. What do you have in your inside that you can give out to another person that will also convince that person that Jesus is indeed Lord? The Bible says, he asked her, what do you have in your house? And she said to him, thy handmaid had nothing, had nothing in the house. So it's like somebody is saying, I don't know anything in the scriptures. I don't have what to tell people. There was a woman who was also faced with such challenge, faced with such situation that she had nothing. The testimony, she had nothing. Because she didn't regard the pot of oil that was remaining. There was no regard for it because she knew it cannot afford the miracle she is waiting to receive. Her mind was not there because to her it is nothing. That thing in your life that looks like nothing, that your mind is not in it, that is the pointer or the, the, the avenue through which God will use to announce himself to another person through you. Look at it. The Bible says the man of God told her that go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors even empty vessels, borrow, not a few. Look at it. He said, go borrow vessels. And another emphasis, empty vessels, borrow, not a few. 
around you there are vessels some empty some quarter filled some uh, half filled some just a little around you there are vessels vessels in the form of human beings vessels waiting to be filled vessels waiting to be edified vessels waiting to be uplifted vessels waiting to be prayed for vessels waiting for a testimony vessels all around you around your neighborhood around that organization where you work around that vicinity where you live there are vessels some empty some half filled some a quarter filled some not filled at all the some a drop the Bible says the servant of God commanded her and when those vessels were brought, the scripture says he encouraged her, he advised her to shut the door behind her until all the vessels be full. What is he saying? Shut the door against distraction. Because there are so many voices that will tell you you can't do this. There are voices that will want to stop you on your way to evangelism. There are voices that will want to remind you of your testimony that will hinder you from saying Jesus is Lord to another person. The Bible says the servant of God encourage her to shut the door behind her. So I am encouraging someone this afternoon that if you must go far in reconciling the world to Christ, you must shut the door against distraction. You must shut the door against any form of distraction. Distraction within and distraction without. If you don't shut the door, you won't be able to go on this uh, assignment of evangelism. We must understand as women that this mantle, this mandate of soul winning was given to us by Jesus himself. How do I know? In the book of Matthew chapter 28, the Bible says when Jesus resurrected, Mary Magdalene, who had no testimony, who was a prostitute before, was the first to go to the sepulchre. And immediately she arrived, she discovered that there was an angel who was sitting on the stone because he rolled the stone away and he was the one that told her the master was no longer there. Her first encounter with the master was a message, go tell my brethren that I am risen. That was a message of reconciliation. Go tell the world that I am risen. So the message of salvation was first carried out by these two women that ran to the sepulchre in the morning. They were the messengers that God used. And that same message and mandate is left for us. We can't run away from it. The Bible says we are to go tell the brethren who Jesus is. We are to go and awaken the brethren from their sleep and slumber. Look at what Deborah did. Deborah understood the content in her. And that was why she was not afraid to go and wake up the giant in Barak. She told him, awake, awake, awake. Thou that sleepeth. This is what God has said. Have God not promised that he will give the life of Sisera? through your hands so why are you here and then this man too understood that if i must win this battle i need the lives of deborah and he said deborah you must go with me and look at it at the end of the day through the wisdom of jael this great man that was a hero to the children of israel was killed who told you that that giant in that community where you live cannot be killed by you who told you that that giant that has been molesting the youth in the area where you are in the form of truck and character challenges cannot be destroyed by you? Who told you? You carry content, woman. Arise, it is your season. Arise and take the stage. Arise, it is your season. I tell you the truth that we are in the days where the world is waiting. Even the body of Christ is waiting to be prepared to meet with Christ. But do you know who is mandated to carry out that assignment? You and I, the woman. So look at this woman. The Bible says when this woman shut the door against destruction, she went into her closet and then it came to pass as she was speaking, all the vessels were being filled. As she was doing, as she was instructed, all the vessels were being filled until there was no one. This afternoon and this morning, I would like to encourage us to do like this woman, the wife of the sons of the prophet did, to shut the door against whatever has been distracting us. And then we also pick up an example 
with the story of the Samaritan woman in the book of John chapter 4 and drop our water pot and that's why I titled this message drop your water pot woman and shut the door against distraction and be on the go for Jesus shut the door against distraction and drop your water pot and be on the go for Jesus your water pot could be something that makes you feel ashamed to the point that it hinders you from telling another person about Jesus Christ. Something that makes you feel ashamed. Why need to surprise you? After my husband went to be with the Lord, I was finding it difficult to talk to people about Jesus. The enemy was just placing in me after a while this condemning spirit. What can you tell them? You have told people that Jesus is a miracle worker. And now you trusted him for a miracle. Look at what happened. What do you have to tell people? That was a voice shutting me down. That was a voice out to hinder me from going forward. From carrying out my God-ordained assignment. I had to gather momentum. I had to gather strength to speak back to the devil. I said, no, Satan, that was still a miracle. That was still a miracle. God did a miracle. Why? Because my husband is raptured in heaven. God still did a miracle. I answered back and fought through until I came out. So whatever it is that makes you feel ashamed, it could be a past testimony, a past story, sorry, about your life. It could be an incident that happened between you and your husband. Maybe you are in a neighborhood where you are constantly fighting and argument erupting every day. Neighbors know that this family, they are fighters. It's an issue that will make you feel ashamed. It's an issue that will make you not want to knock the door of the next door neighbor to even tell them Jesus is Lord. Because to you, you will wonder what testimony can I tell them? Do you want me to surprise you? In that stage, you can still tell someone Jesus is Lord. Yes, you might be here and then you're having challenges in marriage and the devil ministering to you. What can you tell other family? Family, uh, married couples, what do you have to tell them? Tell them, I still, tell the devil, I still have something to tell them. You can tell those ones the mistake you made so that they will not be victims of the same. It is not a shameful, shameful thing to go to someone and say, I came to pray with you people. I know you know my story or you know what is happening around me. But I came to encourage you so that the same thing that has happened to me will not happen to you. If you come in that dimension, I know they will give ears to you. They will pay attention to you. They will want to hear what you have to say. Because this is a testimony going the other way around. You are not coming to blame your husband for whatever is happening. You are coming to... To tell them that this is my own and then this is my mistake. If you can avoid this, I know you will enjoy heaven on earth. So whatever was in your past or is in your life that makes you feel ashamed could be your water pot, could be an issue that the enemy would want to shut the door against you, that would want to stop you, would want to limit you. Number two thing that could not a water pot is that something you don't need something you don't need and yet you carry along with you even now that you are born again something you don't need you know you don't need it but now that you are born again instead of you to drop it you still carry it along for example character deficiency when you are born again and you have character challenge it is something that you need to have dropped and yet you have not dropped and people around you or people in that organization know you with that character. And yet here we are saying that you have the mandate of reconciling the world to Christ. So how would I carry it along? That is a water pot. But God is calling on you today that if you must maximize this assignment, if you must be effective in this assignment, you have to drop this water pot. You have to shut the door against whatever is out to limit you. You have to stop it. You have to stop whatever wants to stop you. I watched a Mount Zion movie, a movie about a lady who had character challenge. And she was in a bus. And she boarded a bus, a matato. And then she matched the feet of a woman. And the woman said, please, you are stepping on my feet. And she couldn't tell the woman sorry. She started insulting the woman. The woman was the one pleading with her. And then, not knowing that this sister, this lady that was wrecking and ranting, 
in the bus, in the matato, was going to church. And she was going to church for evangelism purpose. And do you know the first place she went to was the house of this same woman that she was ranting at in the bus. And she knocked the door and the woman came out and saw her with the Bible. Of course, maybe when she was in the bus or matato, her Bible was in her handbag. She came out now with a Bible and with flyers in her hand. And as this woman appeared by the door, she hissed and said, You, so you are a child of God. You came to tell me about Jesus. She banged her door and went back. The woman didn't leave. She kept knocking. She kept knocking. And then that woman came out and said, If that is how believers are, I wouldn't want to come to that your church. But do you know something? This woman could have as well done something. Go on her knees and plead with her. I am sorry. I know I did wrong. But this time around, don't look at my deficiency. Look at the message of salvation that I have brought. Don't look at what I did. Don't look to my errors. Don't look to my disadvantage. Look at the word of God. Look at the integrity of who God is. Look at the personality of Jesus in my life. And then listen to me. I believe if she had changed her attitude, if she had changed her approach, this same woman would have listened to her. I don't know your approach, how her, your approach has been towards people. I don't know how you talk to people. I don't know how you talk to your in-laws. I don't know how you talk to your children. I don't know how you talk to people around you. I don't know how you talk to people in that organization. I don't know how you talk to people even when you go to the market. But I tell you the truth. You can change your approach. You can change your approach. For the sake of this gospel, there is nothing you can't do in order to win the world. There is nothing you can't do in order to win the world. Number three, what we have to draw is whatever will stop you from connecting with your maker. For this Samaritan woman, her tradition, her culture was what was hindering her from connecting with the master to collect this water that will spring up in her inside that she too will use to water the destiny of other people. To her, that was her limitation. And to this woman, the wife of the sons of the prophet, her limitation was that she looked down on the cruise of oil. You might be here. Maybe you are in grace to sing. You are in grace to cheese. You are in grace to pray. And then you are looking down on yourself. You are looking at it that me, I am not in grace to preach like mommy wallet does. I am not in grace to preach like that you wallet does. I am not in grace. So I don't have what it takes to tell people. No, you do. You can be on your prayer altar and on your knees to pray in salvation of the souls of men. You can call the names of people you want God to convert in the place of prayer. You can be on the prayer altar. You can be on the go. You can also give in times of seed for the salvation of souls. You can go into covenant and raise an altar. The Bible says Noah raised an altar of sacrifice to cause the heart of God to be steered up for divine intervention. Concerning your family members, you can steer up an altar for divine intervention over the lives of those men and those women that are yet to connect to the saving grace of the Lord Almighty. In that organization, you can raise an altar of sacrifice. You can raise an altar. Why do I need to raise an altar? Because in Psalms 50, the Bible says, bring to me all those that have entered into a covenant with me by sacrifice. So your sacrifice creates a platform for the covenant. And you remember what the Bible says in the book of Psalms 89, verse 34. My covenant will I not change. Neither will I alter the things that has proceeded out of my mouth. So God is a covenant keeper. You can enter into a covenant and raise an altar of sacrifice with him by reason of that altar and he not arise to intervene for your sake. I've raised altars of sacrifices. I've gone on my knees praying and believing God for supernatural intervention concerning some certain people. And then I've seen God act and cause it to come to pass. The Bible says Paul planted a pool of water and it is God that gives the increase. Who knows that the first step you, you take in establishing a soul could be the, the planting stage. And then you need an Apollos that will come to water 
and then God giving the harvest. All you need to pray is, Lord, I you call the name of that person. Lord, I hand over so 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 person to you. Send the Lord of the harvest. The Bible makes us understand that the Holy Spirit is the Lord of the harvest. Send the Lord of the harvest into my harvest field and let the Lord of the harvest begin to convict and convert the heart of men towards the saving grace of the Lord Almighty. And you can also pray, Lord, this six so 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 person by dreams and revelation of the night. God can appear to someone in the night, in the night, in a, in a, in a dream, and announce salvation to that person. We have heard and seen people that gave their life to Christ through dreams. We have seen people sitting down, and then God supernaturally visiting them, even when they are not filled with the Holy Ghost. Those are supernatural signs and wonders. God ensuring that his people connect back to him. So you can't get God to eat. Like personally, I used to tell people, I got born again through a song ministration. If you ask me the message that day that was preached, I can't remember. But till today, I will tell you the song. The song that was solo. It was the lyrics in the song. And the choir stood like angels. I believe those choir members didn't come to the platform to sing just like that. They might have prayed. They might have waited on the Lord and said, Lord, when we stand to minister, let souls be saved. So your ministration as a choir member is not to entertain people. It is also a medium for the seven, the seven graves of the Lord Almighty to be extended to the people listening to you. So that day, I wasn't seeing people. The truth is, I wasn't seeing people. I was seeing people wrapped in white. And meanwhile, these people were not more up to 10. But all of them were wrapped in white. And as they were singing, the melody, I can't explain it. It was so sweet and it entered into my soul. And I was asking God, God, can you also use me? As you are using these ones, look at how glorious they look. Lord, I want to be like them. If the pastor had made an altar call after that choir ministration, I would have come down. I would have come out. And do you know the irony of it? The, uh, the, 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 the funny part of the story is that all of those people that were singing, that were on the altar, were women. There is something unique about the woman. The woman is, uh, is a carrier of God. She carries God. So God is in a covenant relationship. He has given the woman the mandate that through her, souls will be saved. And that's why in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible says, through your chest conversation, that men beholding you will give their lives to Jesus Christ. Have you ever seen a place where it is written that through the conversation of man, man, the male man, that other women will give their life to Christ? No. But there is a place in scripture that is written that through your conversation, while they behold your conversation, your lifestyle, your lifestyle as a woman is, 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 is enough to convert men to Jesus Christ. And that's why I said evangelism, reconciling the world to God, begins with you. What do you have in your house? What is that pot that is limiting you? What is that thing that will want to stop you? Can you drop it now? So let's go before God in prayer. Ask God, Lord, I drop. Could your own be character? Could your own be an aspect of your life that makes you feel ashamed? Maybe you are not eloquent in speech like Moses said to God. Moses told God, I am not eloquent. I'm a stammerer. So how can I tell these people that you are a deliverer to them? And then God told him that Aaron will be your mouthpiece. But look at it. Was Moses still communicating with the people? Yes, he was when grace came on him. So I want you to drop that. It is a water pot. It is out to limit you. Drop it. You remember when this woman dropped her water pot? She discovered how empty she was. She connected with the original water pot. The Bible says now is that the sons of men will worship him in truth and in spirit because God seeketh those that will do that. She connected with this man that was more than the water pot naturally that she was carrying. And she didn't know when she left her water pot. You won't know when that issue will drop, that character deficiency. Whatever is in your life that is out to limit you, whatever that is in your life that is out to stop you, 
I decree this afternoon that it is giving way in the name of Jesus. So I want you to go before God in prayer. You know yourself. You know your limitation. You know the things stopping you. Understand you are not empty. You are a content carrier. You carry content. You carry something. The world is waiting for you. Your neighborhood is waiting for you. That organization is waiting for you. Tap yourself and say, woman, arise. Let the woman in me arise. Let the woman in me arise. The woman in me arise. God call you a woman. Some of us are not carrying the name woman or a woman. We are carrying other names. Let the woman in me arise. It was the woman in the border that arose. The Bible says she was fearless. She was a judge. She was a prophetess. She occupied several offices. And that's why I began by saying that the woman is multifaceted. She is a di multidimensional creature. She can fit into all offices. So lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. It is the woman that raised an apostle. It is a woman that raises a prophet. It is a woman that raises a pastor. It is a woman that raises a teacher. Lift up your voice and begin to stir up the content in you. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says on that day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood with a loud voice and said, whoever does, let him pray, let him ask. And there was a, a release of baptism of the Holy Ghost afresh upon the disciples in the book of Acts chapter 2. So let's ask for a fresh baptism, a fresh outpouring of his spirit upon us that will help us to stand in our place. Remember, we have been given the mandate to reconcile the world back to Christ. I told you that in the book of Matthew chapter 28, where Mary Magdalene met with Jesus and he gave her a message. Go and tell your brethren. Go and tell the disciples that I am risen. So the woman was the one that carried the news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Remember, it was the same woman that prepared the body of Jesus for burial in the book of John chapter 2, yeah, chapter 12 from verse 3 to 7. So lift up your voice and begin to stir up. Pray in the spirit. I steer up the content in me. I steer up the cruise of oil in me. I steer it up in the name of Jesus. I decree no more fear, no more shame, no more limitation in the name of Jesus. Nothing will stop me in the name of Jesus. Beginning from today, Marapos Catalia. I take my place on the stage. I occupy my place in destiny. I carry out the mandate that has been left for me by Jesus Himself to reconcile man back to Him, to take the news, the good news of His resurrection. Talk to my brethren. Lord, I receive grace. I stir up this content in me in the name of Jesus. Marabos kole barakosa katalia rabamazan talia le barakos kali barakosan talia le barakos kali katale le bos kole basan talia in the mighty name of Jesus. You must understand that that little thing in you that you 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 think is nothing. That is what God will use amplify and then make you a news and make you a generational impactor. Look at the woman in the book of Second Kings chapter four. That oil made her a name and today we can read about her story the name of her family reflected in scriptures the samaritan woman the same thing from nothingness to somebody her name reflected in scriptures your family name is waiting to be announced through you your children's destiny is waiting to be announced through you your husband's life is waiting to be announced to you. How do I know? Deborah's husband was not a known man, but because of his wife, Deborah, and because she took her place in the space of destiny and ran with the mandate that God entrusted her with, her husband's name, Labidot, came to bear a place. 
to have a place in scriptures. Your husband's name will also have a place in the history of man, in the name of Jesus Christ. So lift up your voice and begin to appreciate God. Thank him for creating you a woman. There is so much loaded in you as a woman to do. There is so much loaded in you. Destiny is waiting for you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 19, the earnest expectation of all creation wait for the manifestation of this woman. This woman that is expected to take the stage. Say with me, I will take the stage. I will occupy my pl place in destiny. Nothing stopping me. Nothing hindering me. No devil can stop me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe someone is refreshed. I believe someone is blessed. And if you are here, you are not born again. Like I said, the, the, the journey to becoming as one who will be a soul winner, as one who reconciles the world back to Christ begins with you also accepting the person of Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You are here, maybe you have accepted Jesus, but you have backslidden. Or you have not been doing what God has asked you to do. You just know you are a woman, you don't pray, you are not concerned about this mandate of souls. You are just living your life carefree. No, you have to be concerned. So I want you to pray a prayer. I want all of us to pray this prayer today, a prayer of commitment. Let's ask God, God, I am sorry for not standing in my place as mandated by you. Lord, I receive grace from today to occupy my place in destiny. That through me and through my testimony, and through my lifestyle, men and women that come in contact with me will be reconciled back to Jesus in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving me another opportunity to occupy my space. Thank you for having mercy on me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. Thank you for the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Thank you for Calvary. Lord, I ask that you enter my name into the book of life. In Jesus' mighty name. If you have prayed that prayer and you have rededicated yourself to Christ and you want to know more so that you can carry out this mandate that awaits you and me, please, there is details that is displayed now. Please contact the number so that you will be guided, so that you will be enhanced, so that you will be directed, so that you will be instructed on what to do in order to maximize destiny. Hallelujah. God bless you. See you at the top. The Lord increase you. As we carry out this assignment, I see all that we desire in our life, in the life of our husbands, in the life of our children, concerning our business, concerning our career, coming to pass in the name of Jesus. God will cause us to bring our family to lamb light in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Let's put our hands together as we welcome our mama to take us further in Jesus' name. Karibu. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for letting us know, for reminding us again that we are not empty. We have dropped every water pot that have been limiting us. Father, we appreciate you. We give you praise, Abba Father. Thank you for hearing us this afternoon. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' great name, we have given him thanks. I want us to give a loud cloud of offering to the Lord and to God's servant to appreciate her for pouring out her heart in today's midday prayer. The woman dropped that water pot. Whatever that water pot represents, We've been told to drop it. Do away with it because you are not empty. There is a content in you that many vessels are waiting for. You carry a content and we have prayed today. We have dealt with whatever water pot it was. We have dropped it. So go and occupy. Go and take the stage. Go and begin to fill those empty vessels that have been waiting for you. Don't allow the content in you to be wasted. We shouldn't allow the content we carry to be wasted. We shouldn't allow the content we carry to sleep. When you carry an oil, in Kenya here, we used to have this cooking fat that is called kimbo. If you don't heat it, you can't see the oil. It slips, it becomes thick. 
but when you put it on the gas and you begin to heat it the fat is melted it becomes an oil that you can use just like we've had today we have asked the holy spirit to fire up the oil in us maybe it has been sleeping the way kimbo becomes you know very uh, solidified and it is not able to to be used except it is heated every one of us at one point or the other we have a water pot that we need to do away with until that water pot is dropped the content in you is not in view neither will the vessels that are waiting to be filled be filled by you but i believe having dropped our water pot by this word that we've had today we are going out in a haste to occupy to take the stage to the glory of god and to make sure every vessel that we come into contact with are filled in the name of jesus the saving grace of the lord is available step out because you carry a content and begin to connect men with this saving grace of god that because you are alive because you're present in that institution there will be no more irrecoverable losses of souls that perish because they don't know god remember she said emphatically that this is a mandate that god entrusted women with and she gave biblical examples that attest to this arise deborah drop your water pot for the wall is waiting for you hallelujah momilabi the lord bless you we celebrate the grace of god upon your life always <laughs> the preaching machine when she stands she stands the lord increase you more and more we cannot thank you enough but we pray that this heart that you have for god this burning desire that you have for women to see women take their place to see women fulfill their destiny go see to it that while you are alive you see all of them come to pass in the name of jesus christ she said something that a water pot could be that thing a water pot could be something that want to stop you from connecting with god this is another opportunity to give our offering. A water pot could be that thing that want to stop your resources from being connected with God. You attain a meeting like this, the water pot in you tells you that this money you are giving it to Pastor Favor. I'm just saying the truth. Permit me to say there are quite a number of people here that believe that this offering they give, they're giving it to me. Just like some of you give your offering, that is how I also give my offering. Because I am connecting to the source of all increase. I'm connecting to the source of all multiplication. Praise the Lord. But it is a water pot that makes you feel that why should you connect your resources with God? Let me ask you this question. Is it your own? It is God that gave it to you. So why should you deny him when an opportunity like this come that you should connect your resources with God? Why should you deny him? Praise the Lord. So I want us to prepare our offering. We want to connect our resources with God because he's the source of all wealth. Eternal Rock of Ages, the number is already being displayed. We thank you this hour for your word that came timely. In an hour like this, in a season like this, we need to hear this, O oh God. In an hour where the church is crying out for revival, in an hour where the church is crying out for souls, Father, it is a timely message for reminding us again that you entrusted women with this mandate of reconciliation, of reconciling men back to God. Thank you, O oh God, for quickening our mind and pointing to us the need to drop every water pot, whatever wants to be a hindrance and a barrier that will not allow us to connect to your divine plan for our lives. Thou not allow us to connect our resources with you, O oh God. You are our source. Just like when a branch decides to cut off from a tree, it is a matter of time. It will wither away. It will be wasted. Father, you are the source of everything that we call our own. How can we dare say that we cannot connect our resources with you? And because we have made up our mind to connect with you, Father, let your breath that enter into the, 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 the clay and converted it to a living soul. Let that breath enter into the work of our hands. Let that breath enter into our resources that it will be multiplied day by day, hour by hour, moment by moment in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Use our offerings for the advancement of your kingdom. And Father, see to it that no life is told, no business is told in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, great God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Mommy Labi, we love you. We celebrate you. And for the wonderful women that tune in today, wonderful men that tune in today, you are highly celebrated. Remember the hashtag, burden for souls. We should not just end at the hashtag. We should take further steps to show the devil that the water pot is already dropped. I am up to take the stage. I am up to fulfill destiny because the world is waiting for me. I carry a content that is to fill other containers that other vessels are waiting for. The Lord bless you. I love you dearly. Look forward to seeing you next week. It promises to be a wonderful time. And remember, this month there will be a special gift to the very first two people that tune in very early. You receive a special gift from the travel of Hannah. Praise the Lord. So prepare by Monday or Wednesday, whichever one. Tune in very early and then your gift will be sent to you. The Lord bless you. I love you dearly. Bye-bye.